En we zijn weer terug vanuit de Kromhouthallen in Amsterdam, waar we de hele dag uitzenden vanaf de Emers ID. Uh, heel veel gasten die al op het podium hebben gestaan komen bij ons uh, en schuiven aan en vertellen over uh, wat zij hier uh, hebben meegemaakt, hebben gezien. Um, welcome. Hello, how fine. are you? Fine. I don't know how what you? you just said, but... No. Um, it's, it's in Dutch and, and, and soon we have technology that will auto-translate it, I, I, I suppose. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, yes. But, uh, but not this time. So, who are you and, and, and what do you do here? <laughs> I just told you that. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I'm Jeffrey Graham. Right. Uh, I lead research for Twitter. I've been with Twitter for about four years, so my team uh, focuses on both advertising research, measuring the effectiveness of advertising campaigns for our clients, uh, as well as uh, consumer research, looking at why people use Twitter, how they use Twitter, uh, and how to develop messaging for future Twitter users. Uh, I'm here at uh, Immerse uh, because I made a presentation earlier today. Actually, right. two presentations. Uh, one in the morning around customer service on Twitter. Right. And then later on, uh, a presentation about the way influence is changing uh, with Twitter and other social media. Okay. Well, that sounds like two great topics. Uh, so how is influence changing? Um, well, you know, when we think traditionally about uh, the way information flows and influence flows, uh, we often think about mass media opinion leaders, right. and then uh, messages kind of flowing from mass media through opinion leaders to everyday people. And I think what we're starting to see is um, that process kind of happening in reverse, where uh, everyday people uh, are able to uh, create observations, um, uh, provide their opinions, and sometimes these are the things that are very influential uh, uh, through mass media and through larger society. So I talked about uh, this instance today of this seven-year-old girl in Aleppo uh, who is uh, tweeting about her experience yes. in the war. Um, a very uh, vulnerable person, uh, traditionally the type of person who would have very almost no power at all, right? No. Uh, uh, but uh, her observations have now uh, been um, amplified through mass media and have become part of a global conversation. And I think this is a, a very interesting case of, of influence um, changing as people get um, access to technology and tools. Right, and, but that, is, that has been happening basically since the start of the internet. Uh, I think so, I think so. Uh, but I think that um, there's uh, an acceleration as uh, mobile devices proliferate. Uh, as uh, media, mass media become more adept at uh, tuning in to what's happening on social media like Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a public platform uh, and a platform that's very much about what's happening now. Uh, so I used to work at the New York Times and I right. know that uh, there's an evolution in that company in terms of how are we going to tweet the, treat, treat this information and tweet this information. Right. Uh, so I, I think that it's, it's growing and developing over time. Right, but it must be a, a pretty big change coming from the New York Times uh, moving towards a technology company. Uh, yeah, it is. It is quite a change. Um, uh, it you know, um, every business is uh, trying to evolve and respond uh, to changes very quickly. Obviously, the traditional newspaper industry has its own challenges and has a legacy business that a company like Twitter doesn't have to no. uh, defend. No. Still, uh, Twitter is, is, uh, is also suffering a little bit from, from uh, difficulties with, with the number of user, uh, yum, numbers of users that are, that are coming in. Uh, um, how, how can um, your department play a role in just, just getting that back on track? Well, you know, Twitter's a really healthy business. Uh, we see uh, our influence growing every day. Um, we have more than 300 million people who come to the uh, platform on a monthly basis. So we have a, a very large global audience and an audience that not only is really influential in the world, but supports a really strong business. So, um, uh, you know, uh, the media is always talking about companies like Twitter and sure. the, the, uh, the weather always changes in the media about how they choose to talk about uh, a, a company. Um, what we're focused on is developing uh, products that please the people that uh, that come to Twitter. Uh, so uh, right now we've been uh, very focused on our live streaming experience. Uh, we just broadcast the presidential debates, uh, right. US presidential debates, uh, where it was a live stream of that uh, uh, telecast along with the actual tweets that were going along with it. Uh, we do the same for the National Football League, uh, which is the largest by far uh, sporting uh, enterprise in the United States. So we're really excited about 
the uh, kind of combination of live conversation and commentary and live video and how Twitter is evolving as in many ways the primary primary platform for right. the consumption of video. Right. Now you're, you're into technology, so, so what, do you, what is the roadmap for Twitter as we, as we look at Twitter as a platform? What are the new things that we, we, we can expect or in the direction we can expect? Yeah. Um, video is certainly a big part of that. Uh, we uh, own a company called Periscope yep. and Periscope is a live streaming uh, a company that allows anybody with their mobile phone to stream to anybody in the world. Uh, so very Twitter, uh, Twitter-y from that perspective mm -hmm. in the democratization of creating content and sharing content. Right. So I, I, we believe very much at Twitter in, uh, in video, in live video. Um, people come to Twitter because they want to know what's happening right now. Right. Uh, and I think a video is a big part of that. Um, and uh, we've made some really interesting strides just in the last couple months and for the first time being able to bring a very big sport experience exclusively on Twitter and provide a high quality experience for people that were watching it on their mobile phones and wanted to see what people were saying about it. Right. So is, is that difficult? Live streaming and a large and uh, sports events? I mean, it's, 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 is it a techno technological uh, challenge? Um, I, 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 you don't want to get it wrong, that's for sure. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> uh, and when you're talking about something like the National Football League or the right. Champions League, right, there's, the stakes are very high. I think what, um, what we're really focused on is the experience of the people that are using the product and, and getting that right. right. Um, because it's unique to um, have, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of content that's on Twitter with, with the the opinions and the commentary that people bring to Twitter. Uh, people have been trained over the years to create these 140 character tweets. Yeah. And I think in many ways uh, that has shaped the, uh, the quality of what people are saying. Uh, right. And so to combine that with the live stream in a way that um, uh, people can enjoy both and enjoy them in a complimentary way, uh, I think is, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, something that uh, it's tricky. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and was that a, was that a big bat to do that? I'm sorry. Was that a big bat to do such a thing? I mean, I can imagine that uh, there's a l lots of uh, money involved and everything. Did you did you test it up front, or or how do you do that? So, a big bat is that a cricket? Uh, no, uh, sorry, a big bat uh, as as a, as a gambler. Oh, big uh, bat. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's a big bat, um, and uh, specifically for the uh, video technology. Uh, we purchased a company called Magic Pony, uh, which is a machine learning uh, company based in, in London uh, that is specifically focused on optimizing streaming video. So what they're able to do is basically sample uh, video pixels and uh, use machine learning technology to basically uh, predict uh, what those pixels should look like and deliver a high quality video image. Right. Uh, and for, for uh, sporting events, uh, there are certain aspects to the stream that um, you can't um, be blurry about. You can't be blurry about uh, what's happening with the ball or the score at the bottom of the screen. So, you know, it's a big bet from a technology perspective. It's a big bet from a partnership perspective. The NFL chose Twitter. Uh, 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 the, as the exclusive streaming uh, company for their Thursday night football games, which is a, a special night of the week. So, uh, yeah, it's a big bet for mm -hmm. us, and um, and we're happy with the results so far. Right. So, there was other question. I mean, I, I just read a comment from somebody a few days ago. So, he said, um, why can't Twitter go back to the days where it was like an open platform and everybody could choose to use their API and develop uh, third-party uh, um, uh, applications and, and, and make the whole ecosystem uh, much better. Th those were good days. Hmm. Um, and afterward, everything got closed and, 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 uh, and you either got shut down or, or bought by Twitter. Uh, w wouldn't that be a great idea? So I, I, I don't go that far back in Twitter. I'm not sure what you're, what you're referring to, uh, what companies you're referring to. Um, Twitter works with a very open ecosystem of partners. Um, uh, we're integrated in all different types of platforms. Uh, particularly on the B2B side. So, uh, for example, IBM arms uh, all of its consultants around the world with Twitter data through a proprietary platform. We work with companies like uh, Hootsuite and Oracle 
uh, to bring data to, to customers and, and to uh, make sure that that data is uh, uh, presented in, in the best way possible and in ways that, uh, that mm -hmm. we may not even have the capability to do. So I think that uh, Twitter is, uh, has a very healthy ecosystem and is very supportive of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. As a, as a visitor here, walking around here at a, at a technology uh, conference, uh, um, um, and obviously with the Twitter in, your, in your, the back of your head, do you see certain trends uh, happening right now that, that are interesting for you for Twitter? Bicycles. I see a bicycles. lot of bicycles uh, yeah. in Amsterdam. A lot of different kind of bicycles as well. A lot well. of different yeah. types of bicycles, and I'm yeah. a big bicycle fan, so uh, that's good. I hope that that's a trend that takes over every city in the world. Right. Um, uh, I haven't had much of a chance to, to walk around here. I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, intrigued by the virtual reality uh, exhibits. I haven't had a chance to try mm. those. Um, Will we see some integration of Twitter in, in virtual reality? Uh, we have a small team uh, um, looking into virtual reality. I, I, I don't know what's going to come of that. but uh, Just a live video is, is an obvious one that could... Uh, um uh, yeah, it could be. It could be. I'm not close to those efforts. Mm. but. Um, uh, I haven't had much a chance to wander around. Uh, I, I had my speaking engagements, and okay. uh, uh, but hopefully I get a chance later on today. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. Nice to talk to you. Dat was weer een aflevering vanaf de Emers ID vanuit de Kromhouthallen in Amsterdam. We zijn hier de hele dag. Uh, je kunt ons de hele dag live volgen vanaf Facebook en de website. En uh, wil je naar terugkijken, dan kun je ons uh, YouTube kanaal bekijken.